Estate and CX, the UK's number one estate and C podcast discussing the future of estate and C, entrepreneurship and business with hosts Mark Burgess and Rob Brady. Welcome to this episode of Estate and CX. Today we're talking to Jamie Campbell from Campbell's, who are right in the centre of England, estate agency who's been around 40 years. He's the second generation running this estate agency now. And we talk about how technology will help you actually create a more personal service than if you was to try to do it without technology. We look at all of the different things that have happened over the years that have kept their company successful and where things are going for them in the future. So Jamie, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. How long did it take you to get down? Uh, about two hours. Two hours, yeah. so good dedication there. Yeah. Um, sorry for our listeners out there and people watching. Jamie from Campbell's. Who is Jamie from Campbell's? And yeah, give us a um, yourself. It's, um, it, my story started probably slightly differently to the normal estate agent story here. Everyone comes out of school with no GCSEs and this, that, and the other. I actually did leave school with GCSEs. Um, I had no intentions um, of coming into the family business. I actually started off at college with um, a uh, diploma in construction. I then went on to uni, uh, do building surveying. And then it got to the point where I realized that I didn't want to get up in the morning to tell everybody what was wrong with the house. I wanted to sell the house, I wanted to do all the positives. I just was not going to get me out of bed in the morning. And as it happens, um, my old man had a business where, where they did just that. So um, I sort of I took a gap year um, and started on the marketing um, for the business. That went really well. And basically uh, got a year in and they plonked me on a sales desk on a Monday morning and said, right, off you go. I had no training, no idea what I was doing or other than the, the background that I knew of, of, of how it went because I'd seen dad do it for years. And um, I just took to it like a duck to water. Um, and yeah, 10 years later, we're here and uh, we've got a team of um, mostly self-employed associates. We've been running that model for 20 years now, mm-hmm. um, which works really well. And obviously we've got a support team as well. Um, but yeah, we're just, just a little independent, it, right in the middle of the country. If you could put a pin right in the middle of England, that's where we are. I love the fact that it doesn't matter if you leave school with no education and can't read or write or whether you've got a university degree, you still just get shoved on a desk and told <laughs> yeah, to Yeah, I know. I, know. <laughs> I, I sort of regretted the four years at uni when, uh, when I got plonked on that desk. I soon realised that it did come in handy later, but yes, I could definitely be doing what I'm doing now without a degree. So if anyone's out there contemplating it, I definitely... Uh, when yeah. I first got my job in a state agency, I was so over the moon. I'd gone to this interview, I'd tried my hardest, and like you know, I eventually got the job, and it was only later I realised... like. You know, the, the thing that you was required to get that job was a heartbeat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's like, well, then we'll see if you sink or swim after that. Yeah, yeah. I, and and, and it, it, I think a lot of the, and especially in this industry, I think a lot of it is like that. It's it's sink or swim. and Because it, it's not really one of those jobs that you can go into where you know you can do it before. Yeah. You, you, you're only going to work that out within a couple of months. And I think um, as well, with certainly when I started, it was you, you think too much into it when actually really all you've got to do to do this job is be a nice person, yeah. and get on with people. And I think a lot of agents try to target you know, new members of the team where you know, they know how to sell a house. No one goes into a state agency knowing how to sell a house no. or our boiler works or you know, the internet. What you need is someone that can actually deal with people properly and be nice. Yeah, yeah. I guess what's interesting about that is that, you know, uh, that's I would I would completely agree with that in terms of the everyday jobs of a state agency, um, but then what people end up with is then they don't as you came in and and worked on the business you'll know this as well like then they don't necessarily have anybody or know how to do marketing mm. because like that's a different job to a state agency. Yeah. Um, so when you joined the company and started working in marketing. What did you find there? What was going on, and what did you have to? Well, that was implement? really quite funny because again, you, you go into the into the business not knowing anything about how. I knew how they work because I've just done four years at uni understanding how a house works. But you know, I had no concept of marketing of houses whatsoever. All I knew is that there were some pictures, a floor plan, and a description. I think when I started, we were still in the newspapers, right. so that was like you know conversation number one. I think, and just at that point, social media started to really be, you know become a thing for businesses. Um, in fact, I think within two years we won Sunday Times Award for best estate agent in the UK for um, social media you know, even back then and the first thing you know and I'm apologize to the rest of the team if they do listen to this because this is me telling the story but it did seem a little bit backdated mm-hmm. in the office um, you know the, the team that we've got have always been very forward thinking I'm going to refer to that as Paul going forward because that's how we do it professionally by the way mm-hmm. so I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna refer to him as Paul Paul um, 
has always been a very forward thinking person um, and always has the best ideas. We were the first agents in the area to do coloured photography. We were the first ones to go in the newspapers. We were the first one, you know, so we've always led the way in that sense. Um, but I think the difference from certainly from my perspective was bringing in a bit of fresh blood mm. um, and a different perspective. And, and I'd grown up in my teens going on various courses with Paul, um, certainly re in regards to marketing. And that's sort of really why I got the gig was because he said, right, we've spent all this money now doing these courses. I know what I want to do, but I need you to do it. You know, are you in? And that's that's how it started. And, and you realize very quickly as an industry how backwards even now that we are when it comes to marketing, which actually is the job. Yeah. It, was, it pretty much was like that crossroads bit in that 10 years ago when you started, which was the exit of the newspapers. Social media was there. A bit like, you know, before that was almost like, websites.com yeah like is it going to take off social media and yeah. i'll keep a newspaper so i feel i even feel like we're at this another crossroads sort of coming up here to yeah. like where does everyone take a state agency business forward isn't mm. it yeah certainly um, with the portals it feels that way but like the newspapers were always a a bit like right move weren't they in the sense that like we can't leave the newspapers our competitors will kill yeah. us how dare yeah. you you know how do you know when when we did it i mean it, it was uproar in the office is that how can you even possibly yeah we'll think? never win another list yeah. Yeah, yeah that's right yeah and, we, and we've got the same problem now because don't get me wrong i'm not you know i'm not in the anti-right move brigade or anything mm. like that but if any any state agency business that's going to survive in the next five to ten years has got to accept the fact that the portals may or may not have the same impact that they have done for the last 10 years. Yeah. I do feel like the, interestingly, even though we're talking about, you know, the industry pressing forward in terms of marketing, I do think we're going to do a full circle. And I do think it's going to go back to how it was, you know, as an old man says, back in the 80s, yeah. um, where it's going to come become personal again, mm. but with technology. Mm -hmm. I think we'll get to the stage where people want to have a personal person looking after them, uh, not just scrolling through right move. I think it's all going to change again. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we, like I said, we're at that crossroads now where it's going to be sink or swim. There's going to be a lot of people fighting against it. When you say uh, it's amazing how backwards things still are, like what, what sort of thing did you, did you mean? I mean, I, you know, one of the big, th don't get me wrong, we don't, you know, property videos as an example. Um, you know, we don't, there's a lot, there's a couple of agents in our area that do a great job of it um, where they're, they're presenting them and they do a cracking job. It's not for us. And we know that from the feedback that we've had from clients as well, but we do do property videos. Yeah. I, I, it's so simple to do go around a house with an iPhone on a gimbal. It takes two minutes on iMovie to edit it, and yet you can pr produce, you know, along maybe maybe some drone footage as well. You can produce the best videos yeah. of these property listings, which we get, you know, spectacular feedback on. People love it, and people have come to us and said, "We viewed this house because we looked at your video." And yet, I, I reckon there's maybe one, two other agents within 20 miles of us that are doing it. Do I do not understand why you do, wouldn't do, do that. Do you think it's do you think it's laziness or do you think that they feel like, uh, I don't know, they don't want to give, they want people to actually, they feel like people would be more like to view the house if they haven't seen a video. Like what, what do you think? Like, I, I'm just wondering why, because I, I, I would wonder why no one would do that either yeah. like, as a consumer. Yeah. Um, okay. I, I guess maybe you could argue like if you give me too much information, I might discount the house before I get there. But a video, like if I discount the house off a video, then probably the viewing would be a waste of time. Do you know, I, I, I've <laughs> got a good answer for that one because I've had that one thrown at me a few times. And I do, I think that certainly not the self-employed agents, and, and I think backtracking a bit here, you've got two different types of agents nowadays. You've got the employed estate agents and the self-employed estate mm -hmm. agents. The employed estate agents are paid a salary. Most of them, I think, even now aren't on commission. They just want to go out and do their job and get on with it. And as far as they're concerned, they're getting lots of viewings on a house and therefore they're doing a good job. Yeah. We go the other way. I don't. I don't mind kipping out on a, in a house for ten hours on a Saturday if I know that every viewing that's gone through that door is qualified and they understand the house. If if I can have ten viewings in a house where they've seen the video, they've been around the house, and they can come through the door and take me around the house because they know everything about it, I'd rather have that than twenty people where ten of them are just going to walk in and walk straight out again. And so I do think that it comes down to um, we'd rather get the viewings. Yeah. And what, what's crazy is actually when we went through that COVID patch, that was the processes we did, went through to make sure yeah. we limited the amount of contact yeah. to the serious people. And it was almost sort of lost to then yeah. that flurry of gates opened up, that. isn't it? Yeah. Well, we were literally thrown an opportunity 
to have an excuse to only allow certain buyers and qualified people through the, through the front door of a house. And yet we still, as an industry, went back to the old ways, you know, a year later where, oh yeah, we'll just, we'll just let everybody in. Yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, even in COVID, I mean, it was crazy. I, I remember we had two properties, and I had two clients that were up for it. Even then, because we were sat there going, right, how can we work on the business when there's nothing else to do? And we had two clients that did the tour around the house on their phone, on a Zoom call. We Facebook lived it because that you know Facebook live was still a thing back then and even then you know we were getting viewings through the door during and no one else bothered everyone just sat back for several months or however mm. long it was and just didn't do anything do you think that's a case of the sort of uh the cart leading the horse if that if that makes sense like in the sense that I get the impression from a lot of estate agents that they're sort of they accept being told how it works by their clients yeah um, and so their clients are saying, well, I want to be on right move. I want as many viewings as possible. I want this. I want that. And if you don't give me that, then I'm going to complain. And I get the impression from talking to you and talking to Paul certainly as well that it just doesn't work like that, Campbell's. Like we, we tell you how it works yeah. and uh, we can show you our success. Yeah. And if you're interested in that, then we get to work together. It's, that's right. <laughs> I, I, I do. I'm, I, I totally agree. I think too many people um, spend time Vendor pleasing. Um, you know, we're not arrogant about it, but you've met Paul, you know what he's like. He says it as it is, and so do I. And I th you are the expert. You're not going into someone's house. If you want to go and make people happy, you want to do the talk, you know, you can go and sell ice cream. You know, it, it's it, it's not that kind of you're there. And especially if you're charging the right fees as well, mm. you've got to do something different, but you've got to believe in it as well. You've got to be able to walk into someone's house and say, no. I'm not saying it's the only idea and I'm not saying it's the best one, but this is how I do it and it works really well. If that's not for you, that's absolutely fine. You want to go down the budget route and you don't want the video and you don't want the support and you don't want all the packages that we offer. That's not a problem, but this is how I do it and that's not going to change. And, and there is no negotiation on that, not just the fee. There's no negotiation on the strategy yeah. either. I, I mean, I feel like that's the cri critical for any business, not just a state agency, to have what what's the point of you, right? Mm. Like, because if it's just going to be, um, there's an argument in, uh, whenever you go into those anti-right move groups or anything like that, there's an argument from some agents that are like, uh, why would you not want your house on the biggest website in the country? And why would you not want as many viewings as possible? And why would you not want this? And you can make that argument, but you're only arguing for the death of your industry. Mm. Like, so that's why you wouldn't want it because, yeah. you know, if that is, if the truth of the matter is you put the house on right move, then I don't need any of you. I mean, I can literally just go yeah. to strike or purple mm. bricks or that's something, right. can't I? So if that, if that isn't the case, if you believe in any, any part of your body as a, as an agent that that isn't the case, then you need to make a, yeah. an argument for yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's also, it's what, it's what you do with the data as well, like Rightmove and Zoopla are on the market. They're all great as, as data feeds. It's great having that, but what are you doing with it? Um, and it, you've got to have the right setup and strategy at the other end when that lead comes in. And we've got methods for everything. Mm. I mean, even down to, um, you know, if uh, someone books a viewing in through Rightmove, the phone call when, it, when, when we first ring the inquiry, there's an there's a entire script for the information we want to get out of them. Before we do the viewing, they get a text off me to confirm the viewing. So by the time, even not just valuations, but viewings as well, by the time that buyer has turned up, they all, we're already busy mates. They, yeah. they know who we are. And it's, it's that's part of that strategy. Whereas I, I think anyone that doesn't believe that there isn't a place for these portals in the future are the ones that are just relying on it. Mm -hmm. And that's it. They, they, you can't just take an inquiry from Rightmove and sell a house. It doesn't work like no. that. It's no. what you do with it as well. Yeah. Plenty of agents have tried and plenty of agents have failed, right? We know it's not working, and I'm not again. I'm not going to turn this into a conversation about knocking the online agents and stuff. But the data is there that they have dramatically decreased their market share in the last 12 months. Yeah. And every person, I, I don't think I've ever actually met a person that's gone on with an online agent mm. and has said afterwards, "My God, that was an amazing experience." Mm. I'm interested to know how you guys do the self-employed model because mm. you know a lot of. Um, the more recent self-employed models, let's say. Yours one's been around a long time, so we'll dig into that in a minute. But a lot of the more recent self-employed models like talk a great game and then you dig into the numbers and it's like, you know, there's this sort of magic number band around of a hundred, earn a hundred grand a year, yeah. isn't there? And like, you know, you dig into someone's web page and they've got sort of three listings for, yeah. you know, 45 grand each yeah. and you sort of think, well, you're, you're not going to earn a hundred grand a year That's right, for yeah. a considerable amount of time. Yeah. And it seems like, 
it seems like there's a little bit of a sort of, I don't know if pyramid scheme is the right word, but it seems like there's a little bit of some people can make some some people can make some money out of it, but probably not the person who was hoping to make money out of it. So how do you guys help someone actually earn some money as a self-employed yeah, agent? I mean, again, it's quite an easy one to answer. We, we run the office like a traditional estate agency. So for all intents and purposes, the rest of the world, as far as they're concerned, we're all members of staff. Right. Um, Got it. The, the problem with the with the on, uh, with the uh, self employed agent model is that a lot of them are out there on their own. Mm. They've got the marketing, and that, that, that's great. But I feel like sometimes it's sold as a uh, a dream that you're going to earn hundred k a year mm. doing three days a week. Mm. It doesn't work like that. You know, if anything, if you go on our website and you look at um, the page that talks about being a self employed agent, it's the complete opposite. In fact, it puts people off. We've written it like that deliberately, which we may have to look at changing in the future because it is harsh. I mean, it very much makes the point: you can do hundred k if you want, but you've got to put the hours in. Yeah. I mean, you know, we've got. Um, you know, guys in our office that have been doing this for 10, 15 years, they've got families, they've got lives, yet they are still plugging away 10 hours a day. And do it. But that's because they're passionate about yeah. it and they want to do it. There is no point in trying to do this job if you're going to do it part time. It's impossible. And I don't see how you can put your faith into someone who says, I'm only working when Monday to Wednesday. Yeah, I, find, I do find because sometimes you see it when the market grows quiet, the shift of voices, especially on LinkedIn, go from you know, you can earn, and it almost goes into recruitment drive. Yeah. And then when it's busy markets and they've got an income obviously coming off the stock that they managed yeah. to get and put online, yeah. then they've earned enough money, so I've got to worry about it. And it's a bit like, you know. It's funny, isn't it, how it phases in and out depending on how the market is. So, yeah. you know, like during COVID or sort of post COVID, if you like, we sat there and went, oh my God, we'd, we'd win, you know, as a business, we could be earning a lot of money out of this if we weren't paying our, um, you know, our self-employed associates what we are. If they were members of staff, we'd have been absolutely caning it. Yeah. But when the market's quiet, and it has been, you know, some of those guys were there back in the 2008 recession, mm. and, they, and, 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 and Paul walked in and said, right, are you in or you're out? Because if you're not, we'll board up the door now, and that's it, we'll go, and everybody's stuck by that. And that, that, I think, is the difference. Um, you know, you have to accept the fact as a business that there's going to be times where, you, okay, we could be earning more money out of it, but we've got a happy team. They're earning the right money, and it doesn't matter whether the market's quite or busy. We're operating it like a traditional estate agency, and therefore, we'll, we'll pull through it. If you're trying to get through a, a quiet market on your own, it's not going to work. No, I, uh, think, I think that's a critical point as well, isn't it? Because, you know, the, the, the self-employed model there's nothing wrong with it, like in the sense that I feel like the people that would like to do it are they've got a little bit of an entrepreneurial spirit in the sense that um well what I certainly find as an entrepreneur and and many of the others that I've found is that they don't really like necessarily f uh, having to follow all of the rules of another company um so they like the idea of some flexibility these people, but you know obviously haven't got the resources to go and set up an estate agency on their own so they're going down a different route but the danger with that is if you have an entrepreneurial spirit then you probably are going to not necessarily turn up and do the right things at the right time yeah and you may do three days a week you probably won't you probably do more but you're still gonna lack a bit of structure Mm. Um, so what you're talking about sounds like a, a, a an environment whereby, okay, you can have the benefits of the earning of the self-employed model, but you still work within a structure to yeah. be a successful estate yeah. agency. And the company will do the marketing to get the listings yeah. and the company will do the admin yeah. and the company will pay for you know, the software yeah. and right move and all of that sort of thing. Yeah. So it's, it's, an, it's, a, it's a nice, nice yeah, blend we of are, the two. I was thinking about this the other day, actually. We're not really at Campbell's as a, as a business is a, a lead generation tool, if you like. We're, you know, we're supplying the data yeah. and the clients and our guys are the ones going out there and, you know, that taking on the clients and, and, and deal with them themselves. And I think that's the way to look at it. And I think part of the, the problem is that, um, people look at the label of being self-employed or being an entrepreneur or being a business owner and they automatically assume, great, I haven't got to work hard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's like any time when you're setting up a, a, a business, it is hard work and it is a graft. You know, and we're taking that bit away from you. That We've done that bit. We've got an established business. We've been, you know, it's, we're 40 years old next year. Yeah. So we've got the branding in the area. You haven't got to do all of that. You've got a team around you that can support you as well. But 
if you're gonna if you if, if you are gonna slack within that team and you're gonna be that one cog in the wheel that's that's only doing three days a week and is not really working, you, it, you don't fit. Yeah, no, absolutely. You, we're, not, not. we're not we're not trying to work everybody into the ground, mm. but, no, but it, the proof's in the pudding. You you will earn as hard as you work. You are not going to earn a hundred k a year, and, and some of our guys do earn a hundred k a year, yeah. but they are it's six They're days a hard, week. Yeah. You know, but if you know, I was on holiday last week. I left, and even though all of my clients are my clients technically, and I've been looking after them, everybody in that office knows exactly where that client's up to on their journey. Um, and I could walk away from that, as could any of our guys in our office. Come back a week later, and you know, it's not like you're kind of where have you been for the last two weeks? You yeah. know, and what what boundaries or rules do you have around? So you, you know, I've, we speak to a lot of. Um, agents, self-employed agents that might have come through in the last sort of few years, mm. and they're obviously not as experienced with you guys doing it for so long. So they're in that new phase of we've created a brand. Usually, it's two people have created a self-employed model, and then they start to inc- recruit people in. Yep. But what they don't realise is the two people were the people who trusted each other, and then they're creating the random strangers in. Yeah. And then they get frustrated because some are falling, following through with the processes and keeping it remained in the brand mm. and there's got a few stragglers they think oh that was a bad move i've given them like a patch and they're destroying it so how how have you managed to do that for anyone who's new into the game and and is thinking right this is something so, I need to down. yeah it, it, it's an int- and i think I've, i can't remember which one i was listening to with you guys the other day but somebody was on saying about how you know um it's a bit like having multiple offices so you've got photographs in different offices for example and if the quality is not the same it's damaging the brand and and we do have that problem um, because the, we, our associates do have a lot of freedom like to do what they want. And that's how we like it, but we do have rules that you have mm. to follow. And my rule um, was, is very simple. Come in and do it our way and then figure out how you want to do it later. I'm more than happy to have an open conversation about how you want to do it because that's what makes you you and unique and that's why you're in the team, right? But f- to begin with, can you please just do it the way we, that we've, we've done it? And then we can work on the innovation and, and, and moving forward with it later. Yeah, um, I, thought, I thought you were going to say, right, it works. So come in and do it our way, or bugger and off. that's the end. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, it's, it's not. It's not quite as, as cutthroat as that. It's because obviously, you know, like we had um, we had Rianne start with us last year, and you know, she's in her early twenties, and she came in. She's like, well, I get why you're doing it like that, but you know, why can't I do it? Like that? I'm like, I'm going to stop you. That I get it. I understand where you're coming from. Just, just, just learn the basics first, and learn how we how we do it, so at least you understand the structure then by all means, do it as long as you're sticking to the brand rules and you're sticking to the, how we do it as a, as a, as a company because you know, we're a team. So we invite the, the, the change and the difference. That's, that's not a problem. But if anything, I'd say in our office, we're, most of the team are, well, we've always done it this way, so we're quite comfortable with that. Mm, so yeah. I, I, we, I want you know, people like Rianne coming in and it, saying, yeah. right, well, that's cool, but I want to do it like this. And yeah. she's, and, and she's phoned and she And interestingly, what I found was when she was restricted, um, she actually didn't perform as well as she is now. Mm-hmm. Once she, when she was given that freedom, right, I've learned the ropes, I'm going to go and do it on my own now. Once she was given that freedom, she flew. Mm-hmm. Interesting, like something that we uh, did quite a long time ago, um, which might, might be useful for you or for anyone else listening with that sort of thing, is like um, to create how-to guides for things. Yeah. Um, can be done in text or via video. So how we do certain certain things and then why we do it that way. Yeah. Um, and the team are allowed to challenge that. And if they do challenge it, and maybe like you say, it's an old process that was invented five years ago and someone's gone, why, why are we still doing it like this? It's like, no problem. You can change it and you can update the whole guide and then we can all do it yeah. a different way. Yeah. Um, ra- rather than just one person going, that seems a bit out of, uh, out of date. I'm going to do it differently. So yeah. I, yeah, I think the important thing is, is that from a branding point of view for us, that you know, to try and keep control over. It's a bit different when you've got a team of, uh, uh, you know, in an office where they're all employed and they just, they're quite happy sitting there doing what they're told. When you've got a, a team of people that do have that freedom to think yeah. outside the box, that's cool. But we've all got to follow it. Mm-hmm. So if someone comes up with an idea, because I'm going to do it this way, share it with the team. Mm. You know, if you found a certain prospecting method that you're using or you know you've um you know like the other day i found a uh, an app on the phone that helps with floor plans oh my, it's game changer i was honestly I mean, i'm a proper tech geek so i was all over this and i just happened to meet my drone guy in a house he went mate you gotta see this so the first thing i'm doing next week is going in and going right i'm not saying you have to at this point but this will change your life and you've got to share it with the rest of the team whereas we have had members of the team in the past and i'm going back for must have been a you know 
eight years ago now, where they were coming in and they were doing their thing and they were doing it well, but they weren't sharing. Yeah. And if you're not prepared, you know, we're sharing our knowledge with you. We've got, you know, a ridiculous amount of experience and knowledge in that team and we're sharing with you. We've got you off your feet. If you're then going to find a strategy or a method that works really well, you need to share it with the rest of the team. And that's, I think, is the self-employed model with us that works compared to others. And, and it, with your partners or the, the empl uh, self-employed people, are they allocated areas? Or? Yeah, good question. So... I won't go into the ins and outs of how exactly their commission is oh, split you up. You told me before about this, and oh my uh, God, it's I like I gave you a headache. <laughs> it blew um, my mind, but. So, the, the bottom line is, each it, we're obviously we're um, we're in the middle of the country, so it's all villages and towns and mm. stuff. So basically, when you come on board, you're given a certain amount of chimney pots, and I can't remember what it is now. It's like fifteen hundred chimney pots or something like that, which is a village basically. So I so I have a village, Crick, um, and I, only I'm allowed to sell houses in that village. That's 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 in the agreement. That's how it is. Mark's got Braunston, Amanda's got Weedon. You know, we've got. You know, everyone's it's everywhere else is a whited out area. So, um, and then what we do is we take, and this may change in the future, I don't know, but it's worked for us for the last 10 years. But how we've done it is one person takes charge of the office every day. So we take it in turns that day, nine till five, you are in charge of that office, you know, warts and all. So any mm -hmm. bad things that come in, you've got to deal with it and give it to the relevant associate. Any leads that come in. The bad phone calls, you go like, oh, uh, no one's here, can oh, you phone yeah, back no, tomorrow? Yeah, yeah, I can't do it. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, well, yeah. Like, Monday's yeah, usually I'm, I'm shit. I'm not here tomorrow, so call then. Yeah. <laughs> It's, and you have and that and that's and that's where I think the teamwork works really well because you you have to be that support for the rest of the team like they're all out going out and doing yeah. their appointments and everything. you are the backbone for yeah. that day but your reward for that is that you get the leads that come in obviously if something comes in in, in, in an associate's area you have to hand it over but you get I think it works out about you know if I pass the lead to Mark because it's in Braunston, and I get seven and a half percent of that fee right. just for passing that lead over to him but my job on that duty day is to qualify that lead, ask all the right questions so that when Mark goes through that front door, because it's in my interest yeah. to make sure that we've yeah. won that instruction before we even walk through the door. So I might get five, 600 quid out of that. And that actually works quite nicely because you think about a traditional agency, like having worked in an office environment before many years ago, you get negs that are booking viewings for other negs because you're like, oh, I don't want to do it. I can't be bothered to do that. Yeah. Or they're doing a viewing They're not there. sold. You but can yeah, do they're, that they're viewing, so I'll tag it on. Yeah. And then... And that person's going out and doing the viewings, and and the, and when when we started to look at the the analytics of this, when I started to look at like okay, right, let's look at the next. I was like, you're not selling twenty houses a month. What have we've noticed? You've taken eighteen phone calls yeah. for people wanting to view, and yeah. about fifteen of them you're not actually yeah. taking around viewing. That's so. Right. You're not even doing any of it. You're just basically a receptionist yeah. taking details yeah, and yeah. booking in an appointment in the calendar. You're for not, someone else. Yeah. yeah, for someone else to do. Yeah. That was the argument. And that and other person don't yeah. want to do the viewing either. <laughs> yeah, they just sort right. of open the door and go like, can we yeah, go now? Go in, go. in theory, yeah. in theory, probably not in practice, but in theory, you could walk into our office, sit on the phone, generate leads over the phone, and you could actually make a living out of doing just that job. But it, it, it's not it's not going to work. And, and, and you will get hung, drawn and quartered in our office in the Wednesday morning meeting if it comes to like you're passing over leads that aren't any good. You yeah. know? And, it, and it, it's a bit of banter in the office like you just we, you'll get publicly flogged for it, you know, and <laughs> but nobody does it because yeah, you know, because we just don't do that to each other. And it, and it is about the teamwork. Yeah. So you will not want that done to you. So it's not going to go around. So another question on that, regards to something like a market appraisal yeah. booked in. Is that a similar process? So if someone calls up and wants to book in for, for you say Mark yeah. in another patch, yeah. do you have a certain process of how that's conducted and how that's done, or does it get passed over for that person to call them up and sort out themselves? So uh, it, it depends. I mean, so so whenever so let, let, I'll turn that one around and let's say that someone's booked one in for me. Yeah. Um, I there's about when I mean, you've seen my questions on life cycle of product which i need to change because there's if anything there's too many of them i'll yeah. be going to a lot of detail <laughs> yeah. you know but i want to know your inside leg measurement before i'm coming through your front door and um you know if there's any information on there that, that's, that's not good enough or it's not qualified enough i will not go through that front door until i'm happy to do so so i might phone the, the client up and introduce myself first i know you spoke to mark yesterday but i'm the one coming out nice to meet you and all this uh, and more importantly i'll drop a text over it's got my profile on the website on it it's got my contact card on my iphone and they've received that before I've gone through the door. And, and I get a lot of good feedback on that. Other guys in the office have got other tactics that they use. Mm. Um, I, I try to encourage people to do it my way. They don't have to, but that, that, that works really well for me. And, but at that point, that is my responsibility now to look after that lead. Mark's done his job. He's set it up nicely. And his payment for being on duty will be when I pull that off, he gets, he gets the referral portion out of that, out of that fee, but it's my responsibility. And same applies for a, for a viewing. If an applicant phones in, 
you get the portion for the applicant. If you then want to go and do the viewing, you can go and do the viewing. Most of our guys now tend to do their own views on their own houses, which is how I like it, because mm -hmm. that's, that's really important. But you get the, the, what's great about our team is that you can pick and choose which part of that process you want to do. I could just go out and do valuations all day, every day, and that's all I did. And I could let somebody else do the take on, I could let somebody else do the viewings, and I haven't got to touch that ever again. It's not how I like to do it, because mm -hmm. part of the reason why people come to us is because you've got one person that you're dealing with through the whole process. but. It's very much a sharing culture. What do you think? Um, actually, before I ask that question, I've got to ask you something that our listeners might be thinking: the floor plan app. Do you yeah. remember what it's called? Uh, yeah, hang on. Doesn't matter I, if you I, don't remember. I, I can I'll put it in the show I'll, notes. I'll pull, it out quick, I'll pull it out quickly now, shall I? It's um, it'd be, it'd, be, it'd be worth anyone downloading it and just having a play with it around their house. Honestly, I was all over because I was lines. thinking. Yeah, so yeah, it's, it's, it's called Polycam. Polycam. So yeah, it's it's seventy quid a year. I highly recommend that you just just pay the seventy quid, right? You go around a room with your camera and it just it automatically picks up the walls, the windows, it'll work out the measurements between awesome. the windows. That honestly it's insane. I can uh, full disclosure, I've not done it in a client's house yet because I yeah. only found out about it three or four days ago. But, but you've what, done your floor plan your house and have you, like yeah. have you ever <laughs> double checked the So yeah, so I've I've got it in my head that when I go and do it the first time, I, I will double check I will use the, the old laser measure the, around and double it check it because yeah. I because you well, the one thing we couldn't do is that I wouldn't be able to put that into our floor plan system and produce that. So I'd still have to draw it online, really. Yeah. Um, but it saves me having to draw it. Yeah. Because that takes up time. I'm, Only I'm, a matter of time before they add that feature. Then, oh, it will be. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, it might, I mean, don't get me wrong. The floor plan that it produces is more than adequate to put on a property listing. Right. But you know, it, it's just not quite just how not we want to do yeah. it. But yeah, awesome. amazing. Um, so Campbell's now. How long has Campbell's been around now? So it's forty years next year. 40. That's up for debate, actually. Some people say it's nineteen eighty-five. Some of us have said it's nineteen eighty. I don't actually know. All right. Well, but around forty. 40 years. Around forty <laughs> years, right? Um, and during that period of time, obviously, there's been, you've, there's been a lot of estate agents that have come and gone, and some others that have hung around as well. Some have, you know, uh, got smaller, some have got bigger. Like, what do you think, having seen it from pretty much childhood, right? Yeah. Right through to now working fully inside the business, working as one of the people that's running the business. What, what do you think the difference is between that and like, you know, what's the long, what's the secret to the longevity and like, how does it just keep doing that as opposed to like drifting away or, or even getting stuck on fees or anything else? Like what was, I, I think, um, I think it's, I think it's the passion. You've got to want to do it. Um, it's a really tough industry. This is, I mean, it, when you, f sometimes I do sit back when I do have five minutes to think, and you know, when you realize what you're actually doing day out, going into people's houses, going right into their personal lives, mm. going into their personal space, and th that is exhausting. I mean, I go home and I feel like I've done a performance all day because that's what it is. You go in and out and in and out, and it's, mm -hmm. it's a constant performance. And you've, and you've got to want to do that. I, my old man tried to push me out of this. He, he, we, I did not grow up for the first 18 years of my life saying, right, this is what you're going to do. You're going to take yeah. over the family business, and this is how it's going to be. And what was interesting as well, and I've, I've never forgotten this, um, nobody ever referred to, my, to, to me as a salesman, ever, which actually essentially is kind of what the job is if you want to go down the traditional route. And it wasn't until a couple of years in where a client said, do you know what, Jamie, you're a really good salesman. Mm. And I thought, no one's ever told me that. I've never, I've never referred to this job as being in sales. Not, that word was never used in that office. All, all I was told to do was go out, be nice to people, get the right result for them, and that's that. Yeah. And I think I think possibly too many businesses concentrate on on the uh, KPIs and the statistics and how many sales they're getting through and this that when actually and I, I might misquote this but I'm pretty sure it's Richard Branson said that concentrate on your clients and the and, and the money will come later mm -hmm. yeah. and that, that that that's just mantra in my head um, and I think I, I think you've got to shift your focus it's got to be fo you've got to enjoy what you do I've got I've got clients that I've, I'm best made my best man at my wedding was an ex client mm -hmm. oh, yeah. you know the, the people that I that I work with, they become friends. It's a long journey sometimes. And you've got, journey, you've got to yeah. want to do that. If you're not prepared to answer your phone, you know, I mean, don't get me wrong, I don't want people phoning me after six o'clock every night. But I say to people, if you want to phone me at seven o'clock in the morning when I'm walking the dog, you crack on. Because yeah. I'm, I'm okay with that. And, you, and you've got to befriend these people. And there's some people that don't like that. And genuinely, that you're okay with it. That's what that's the yeah. key bit, isn't it? Yeah. It's like, no, you're not, doing it, you're not doing it like 
just to make a sale. It's like, no, I'm okay with that. Like, right. you know, I can help you on your property journey. And if you want me to, this is how much we'll yeah. need to get paid so yeah. I can continue doing that for a living. Yeah. But I'm happy to help you on your property yeah. journey. And the thing is as well, when you've got all these estates that are doing these, these really cheap fees, like we're 2%. Yeah. Like, there's, you know, and the, the, the associates in the office have the freedom to do whatever they like, but we are, we are a 2% agent. And if you're the kind of agent that's going out and charging 1%, you don't value your own service that you're providing, therefore you're clearly not enjoying it, and you certainly can't expect to progress the business on, certainly going into the next five, 10 years where, we are, where technology is gonna be everything, and you are gonna to have to invest in that. You can't invest in that if you're not charging the right fees, and if you're not charging the right fees, it's because you're not providing the, the best service for the client, yeah. and that all comes back down to why estate agencies fold, yeah. and they don't work, because they've got it wrong. And it, so, on. As I say, and that goes back to what you were saying at the beginning, you know we go full circle back into a, a person centric yeah. business yeah. utilizing technology. And, yeah. and if you don't utilize the technology, the efficiencies that technology will support you in yeah. means that you can't service people because you're trying to deal with like a yeah. hundred people at a cheap right. fee and that's yeah. not physically possible, especially if you don't use the technology yeah. behind it. I think the biggest mistake, if anything, going forward in the next five to 10 years will be, um, estate agents that rely on the tech too much. The tech is brilliant. I mean, you know, I, you know, life cycle for us was a game changer and it's great, but you can't just have life cycle. You've got to have like, we've got Sean in the office. She does the rocks. She's, she's the one on the end of the phone that finishes that off on a personal level. Well, just for anyone listening that don't know what rocks is like, what's she doing there? So, um, um, oh God, I'm trying to think about how to explain it now. So it, it's, um, you know, if we've got an active vendor on the system who's looked at a blog or looked at a property or done any form of activity on our system, we get a notification to say they're active and Sean will go and check them out. It comes up with a list of things that they've done. And so Sean is prepared for that phone call as well, which is really great because she knows what they've been looking at. So she knows what questions to ask, which is, which is really good. But that's, you know, we could, we could set up the journeys that we've put on Lifecycle, send out these emails and just leave it. Well, that's completely pointless. And I, th you know, I'm going to take a backward stance on this and say that the technology is great, but the one percent agents will be the ones that take on something like Lifecycle and then don't do anything with it. Mm. And that that my biggest fear, and I think the fear that of anyone running a, an estate agency at the moment should be, make sure you've still got that personal side. And that is, I, if you're going to ask me what I think the problem is going to be in the next five to ten, it will be people. Mm. That's going to be the issue. Yeah, I think you're right. I think, but it's not just. Well, is it is it is it people or is it people that have a purpose for being there? You know, yeah. Like as opposed I, I'm to that, like, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, absolutely, like, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's you not have anyone there for the sake of I it. went, uh, I went away last week, and uh, as we went into the airport in, uh, it was in Lanzarote, right? We went to Lanzarote, going through the airport, and there's a woman that was standing there. And she was asking if the if you were with children under the age of sixteen, right? If you are, then you go that way, and if you're not, then you go that way, right? And uh, me and my son had to fly back to England, and then we had to fly back out again. And the second time we went out, she was still there doing the same thing. And I said to Fraser, my son, like, it's not it's not great for your job prospects if you can be replaced by a sign. Mm. Like, yeah, you know, uh, yeah, let alone yeah, AI. Yeah. You could literally be replaced by a sign. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's, that's, that's <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a good point to bring up that because I, I took Sean with me the other day to a, um, uh, a, a course and, and a lot of it was based on AI and she sat there and went, oh my God, I'm going to lose my job, Yeah, right? And I went, Sean, that's not how this is going to work. <laughs> you know, you know, we, we, there are, that your job is personable. That's what you do. If you were still sat there and... I don't know. Um, I'm trying to think of an example now of something that we've now got rid of. Well, the rocks is a great example, yeah. right? The rocks are doing loads of the work. Like previously, before rocks, right? Um, who was it that's calling the rocks? Sean. Oh, it's Sean. Yeah. Right. So, so Sean before her job of say prospecting for new listings, what would she have done before? rocks or so the technology? That's a great question because that's what she did before we obviously joined Lifecycle. So when, when Sean started just after COVID and she is brilliant on the phone, she's very personable, she, she loves talking to people, right? And we literally gave her the, the, it sounds really bad now when I say it, but we literally gave her the database on Dupix and was like, right, cool people. Uh, I want you to call people. 
no notes, nothing. We'd, we'd left it in an absolute state like before COVID. Like well, nothing was up to date. And Sean is, well, there's, there's no other phrase. What, she was cold calling. And she, so she was co literally cold calling what? Um, old valuations? Oh, or yes. Just, so or just anyone? And anyone that was on the list as a vendor was getting, a, in, yeah. in our area, was getting a phone call. And what right? would she say to them? Uh, exactly. And, and uh, the, the worst <laughs> part about this is, is that, and this is where life cycle has helped as well. And people don't even think about this. She was losing the passion for it yeah. because she was getting a lot of so, f-offs. So she's you know? dying on the phone. Yeah. So she and she was hating it. And, and it's a shame because when you get someone like Sean who's really good at it, you, really don't want to let her go because yeah. she was. She but was this really is great because this is a great example for people listening of like you know how AI isn't going to replace their jobs, right? So so she's on. Jupix and she's calling anybody that's a vendor because that's as good as we can give her yes, really that's all we have she's yeah. losing the passion she's wanting to kill herself yeah. and potentially thinking this job ain't for me yeah even though she's great at yeah. it but she's not able to prove she's great at yeah. it because she's just getting voicemails yeah um and then switch the life cycle and the technology is now doing the job of yeah. sifting through all that yeah. data which means that she's got more time to make more phone calls because yeah. half the battle then was her working out whether to make that phone That's call right. or not but it's sifting through it and what it's doing is it's going yes all of these 5000 people are have got the tag of vendor but uh let's immediately say well these 3000 haven't done anything online, I haven't been on your website or read any of your emails or mm. any of your social media recently. So let's put them to the side for a minute. Okay, there's another 2,000 here that have been reading stuff, um, but some of them haven't been reading anything for, you know, six six months or more. So let's put them to the side. So then let's narrow it down to here's a bunch of people, maybe 15 people that in the last 14 days have been reading some of your content around what to do if you're thinking about selling your house and our vendors have got a house to sell and either have done an instant valuation maybe or a full valuation and put them in a list for Sean and give her the background as to why we've put them in the list and then she's going to call them, right? That's right. I mean, yeah. and, and then her job becomes really valuable, doesn't yeah. it? Well, it, 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 ch it changes the game completely because one, she's enjoying it. Because she um, because she she knows that this isn't going to be a dead end call. She phones time. them for a reason. But right? she's phoning them for a reason, <laughs> and she has a she has a, a a conversation starter that's not are you putting your house on the market? You know, oh, um, you know, what did you think to the blog? How, you know, have you got any more questions off the back? Has it changed? You know, she can actually have conversation. Which which let's be honest, that's that's the game. Mm. Doing it doing a sales call like that, the game is to have a conversation. You don't you, you don't get to the are you putting your house on the market bit until the end. And that's now allowed her to have those conversations because she knows what the client's yeah. been reading. But what I love what, and what I love about that as well is it's exactly what you're saying. It's like some people would see a conflict, wouldn't they, between like maybe I know, I know uh, when I talked to Matt Giggs about it, he was very anti, even though he uses Lifecycle now, he was very anti the idea of Lifecycle to start with because he was like, I don't want technology to replace all my people. Mm. And, uh, you know, if you believed, I don't know, uh, just a pure uh, futurist, they'd say technology is going to replace all the people. So you've got these two, two sides of the argument. I want it to be more people. I want it to be more technology. But actually, what we're talking about in the middle there is like, Technology is going to replace people that could be replaced with a sign mm. yeah. <laughs> or people that could be that are just manually going through yeah. some data. Yeah. But at the end of it, there'll be a more personal service. Yeah. Like Sean is giving a much more personal service using technology than she was not using technology. And, and How and, mad's that? And interesting as well, like you know, you talk about the lady with the sign. You know, if you're the kind of person that is quite happy standing there being a sign and you're not thinking about how um, you know, that a sign's going to be put there, what am I going to do next? You're not the kind of person that needs to be in our team. Sean was different because she saw what was coming and was like, right, okay, so what else am I going to do? What mm. else can I use to fill my time to, to, to make me being here more productive? And that's the kind of mindset in people that you need. You need the people in your team that are going to embrace the technology and go, great, that's just freed up four hours of my day now. What else can I do to push the company forward. Absolutely. And if you haven't got that mentality, then then I'm sorry, yes, you are going to have your job replaced by technology. Because a lot of people are just filling their day with admin yeah. tasks, yeah. aren't they? for the sake of it. I think uh, I watched, listened to a podcast yesterday and they were talking about every team member. You need to recruit team members not on experience but curiosity. Yeah, Because experience and training yeah. can be developed in any company. Yeah. But the curious mindset That's right. can't be. And that example was like, instead of me going, right, this is your process Sean her yeah. carrying out and then wondering a year down the line why she's yeah. being made redundant yeah if she, di if she didn't have the curiosity that would have happened but with the curious mindset she's gone mm. 
I'm looking further down the line. I'm a bit more curious. Yeah. I'm a bit more curious about my role, the future of it, how I can change it, what mm. I can implement in. Like having worked with dozens, hundreds of teams over the last five years or so, the mm. teams that are curious are the ones. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't care how you do it as long as you're open to the idea of doing it differently. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it, you know, I, you know, give a complete offhand a different example. So my, I've got two daughters, and one's two, and one, uh, sorry, one's about to turn three, one's about to turn two. And when they went for their first year checkup or whatever it was, and they were trying to work out whether she could count to five or wherever it was, and you know, looking at shapes and things like that, they weren't interested in what she knew. They were interested in her ability to learn, mm. and can she do it? And can she do it again? And that's taken away from us, I feel, when we go to school and things like that. Yeah. You know, you're taught to this is how we're good, this is how you're gonna do it, that's it, and nothing changes. School curriculum probably hasn't changed in the last 100 years or whatever. And it's finding the people that are fighting through that and fighting against that, that pressure that's being put on them to not think outside the box mm. and, and, and embrace it. Because mm. you know, what we don't want is a team full of people absolutely beside themselves because they think they're gonna lose their job. I want a team of people that are going, right, that's great, right, how are we gonna utilize this as much as we possibly can? Yeah. You know, the um, the fact that now that you've got um, you know the AI and life cycle that helps you write your property details, it's not perfect, mm. but it definitely writes the skeleton. You take that and the floor plan app, photos being done through AI. My, the time it takes me to do a take on has halved yeah. in the last 12 months. Yeah, absolutely. You know? And that's not replacing a stage. No, it's that's not replacing changing my job. It's, it means I can go out and do another valuation now, or I can go out and do two take ons in a day rather than one. Yeah. You know, and, that, and, that's, the, and that's the difference. But, and again, that's why I feel, and I'm not saying that having employed estate agents is, is the wrong thing, but I find that that's how having self employed estate agents works well because the first thing those guys do now is, right, how can I take on more business now? I've, 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 my time that's taken to, is halved. I've now got more time to take on more business because they're going to get paid more. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, and and that's they where can, it works. And they can service that business now. Yeah. Whereas before, like, you know, even if they could have taken on double the business, we wouldn't have been able to service it. We would have no. got some bad reviews. It would have all ended in catastrophe. Yeah, yeah that's right. Love it. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, Rob? No, I think you've really good. Really enjoyed this episode. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah appreciate it. No, it's nice on. to openly talk about it because you don't get a chance to very often. <laughs> Brilliant. Thanks for coming in. You're Cheers. welcome. Thanks. Thanks for listening to this Estate Agency X podcast. Can you make sure that you're actually subscribed to this podcast channel if you liked the content? Uh, it helps us massively to get better guests and it just helps us generally. So you might think you're subscribed, but just have a double check whatever your um, podcast platform of preference is that you're actually subscribed. And then that way we can continue to grow the channel and get better and better guests for you.